Please join me for the call to worship. Come quickly to the tomb. Where is our Jesus? He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Alleluia. He has risen. Good morning and welcome this morning. Before service, I went back in that way and I sat down in Quentin's office and I was huffing and puffing and <clears throat> I said to him, I don't know if I'm huffing be and puffing because of a carryover from COVID or because of my age or because I'm out of shape. And he said, it's probably a combination of all three. <laughs> I think I'm gonna try to get him fired. <laughs> And I, as I was sitting in his office, he has a nice easy chair in there, and, and it used to be my office. And, <clears throat> and when I moved from quarter time to half time, they shrunk my office. <clears throat> so if I work anymore, I'll have to put a tent out on the street. <clears throat> anyway, good morning. And if you're visiting with us, we're very glad to have you here. If you're watching us on TV later this week, we are glad that you could do that. If you're listening to us or watching us on Facebook, we're glad we have that technology, and if you've found Facebook, you've also found the location for my Bible study, because that is also on our Facebook page. And if you're listening to the radio, again, we're glad for all that uh, technology and glad that you're a part of our service. A couple of announcements this morning. Jim Wick is hospitalized in St. Cloud, so please add him to your prayer chain, prayer list. And Dodie Aronson's um, sister, uh, Pauline McDaniel, she was doing very, very well. She's, I think, about 95, but uh, just in the last couple of days or so, she was climbing a ladder, which I don't know why she was doing at that age, and she fell and broke several bones, so she mm. needs our prayers again, and when you're 95 or so and you break bones, it gets to be kind of a very serious thing, so please remember her. Our thanks to our singers that lead us this morning and to Rod for his solo. The altar flowers today are given in memory of Richard Olison by Barb. We thank you, Barb, for doing that. And our radio, <coughs> our radio broadcast is given in memory of Howard and Nina Hauge by Jennifer, their granddaughter. Thank you, Jennifer. We ask you to add uh, prayers of comfort to Margaret, Margaret Bonema. Her great-granddaughter died, and uh, to lose a young one, uh, they're not supposed to die before us. And so please remember Margaret and also uh, Bud Johnson's family at the death of his wife, Jean. And this morning, we'll be welcoming new members a little later on in the service, and we're not going to bring them up because of COVID. We will ask them to stand, and if you'll take a note of who they are, if you can uh, try, and before you leave, get close to them and give them an elbow bump and, and welcome them to uh, our saviors. Quentin has a couple of things. Good morning. Uh, just a couple quick announcements from me, and then I'm going to dive into a temple talk about why there is an old tent sitting up in the narthex. So uh, today is our last day of Sunday school for the year. So Lisa's um, elementary Sunday school is celebrating by going out for breakfast after service today, and Java with Jesus will meet with me down at Java River for the last time this school year. And then I just haven't had an opportunity to say thank you. So thank you so much for all of you that contributed to our Easter breakfast fundraiser. We raised over $600 before our expenses were taken out, and that will be divided up among all of the students that are going to the National Youth Gathering uh, for next uh, this coming summer of 2022. So thank you so much. We raised $600, and I'm just beyond grateful for your support of our youth program. Okay, I'm over here. Good morning again. Uh, today I am kicking off a fundraiser that I am calling, wait for it, Set Up Camp Fundraiser. And so I am trying to raise a little bit of money for some of our new tents, um, for new tents for our youth program. Ever since I've come here, this is my fourth year at Our Saviors, um, I've tried to get a crow wing and a boundary waters trip. Last year we got our first crow wing river trip and it was great except for we had to buy a little bit of a, um, tents and equipment so that we could function as a group. And so I am hoping for your support to raise uh, money for new equipment. 
And um, we have two trips this year. We have a Crow Wing River trip in July that uh, you'll receive more information <laughs> on in the real mail, not your email, but an actual mail. So watch your mailbox for that. And then we have a group going to the Boundary Waters, and that trip is full. So we have people ready, and we just need some equipment and your support. And I got this great picture here because it has a tent on it, and I thought, oh, Anyway, it has a tent, and I thought that was a great picture because it represents um, what we have in our storage room right now, about one good quality tent. Um, <laughs> Pastor Doug Olson, when he was here, um, had a bunch of money and a bunch of groups that raised the funds, and so there's about 20 tents up in our storage room right now, but they are 25 years old, and... Um, they're 25 years old, and according to one of the students on our trips last year, I asked him after the first night, so how was your tent? And he said, well, it's a little crowded, and they smell funny. So I am asking for your support today to um, help me uh, raise a little bit of money for our tents. And uh, just a quick background um, beyond the tents is that um, since I've been here at Our Saviors, um, our Mission Endowment Fund is beautiful. It has supported our youth in so many ways. Um, ways like when we go on our ski trip, um, I don't have to divide up the cost of the bus and to give it and share it with our students. Our Mission Endowment covers that. Our Mission Endowment subsidizes the cost of the youth gathering, the national youth gathering that kids go to. Um, so throughout my time here at Our Saviors, I have not had to do a major fundraiser. And so today I'm asking for your support. This is an opportunity um, to have tents that are spacious, have equipment that works, that is up to date, and um, that is um, acceptable for our kids to use. So I'm shooting for a $5,000 fundraising goal, and here's how I got that number. We're looking at 10 new tents at uh, that cost right there. I personally own this tent. It's a phenomenal tent that has a big dome base, and then the rain fly goes over it, and it creates a little porch. So the kids can put all their gear in that little porch and have more sleeping area. It's phenomenal. Uh, looking for new backpacks so that when we go to the Boundary Waters, we don't have to rent those. Looking at sleeping pads so we don't have to keep sleep on the ground. That's no fun, and sleeping pads are great. Um, and yes, the kids could bring their own, but these fold up into the size of a loaf of bread. And so that saves us a bunch of space as we try to fill up those backpacks um, with as uh, little weight as possible. Uh, water filters so that we don't have to boil water in the boundary waters and so we don't get sad diseases like Giardia. It's bad. <laughs> so uh, this number brings us to roughly $2,700, but this just covers the basics. That's enough so that we have new tents and so that we can send nine people to the boundary waters. But what happens in a couple of years when our, uh, the kids tell all their friends they're having fun and they want to go on the trip? So we would be stuck with that and we would be back fundraising in a couple years. So I'm hoping that we can just do a one-shot, we're done fundraiser and we have equipment for another 20 years to help us go on these trips. So we're shooting for $5,000 and the extra beyond that will help us get some sleeping bags that fold up really small that save space, some lawn chairs for the crew, Crow Wing River trip, some hammocks so we don't have to sleep, uh, sit on the ground all week, and extra camping equipment like uh, pots and pans and fun stuff. So the really cool part is that our synod has partnered with us for the fundraiser. So I have secured a $1,000 matching grant from our Southwest Minnesota Synod's uh, Mission Endowment Fund. And the only catch is that the congregation has to support this, otherwise that uh, $1,000 grant goes away. So this is a grant, a gift given to us that we don't have to repay. It is for us to use to benefit our ministry. So we're starting on the plus side with $1,000. So I'm asking for your support today to help me um, help our program grow so that kids can enjoy my beautiful river cooking, Spam Getty, and they can try uh, tortilla s'mores, one of my favorite river adventure um, meals and desserts, so that they can experience amazing uh, views of God's creation like this so they can go down the Crow Wing River on a trip that is unplugged without phones and so that we can grow as a people of God and so that they do not have to sleep in crowded tents that smell funny. 
So um, I'm asking for your support today. These are the lists of um, money and uh, items that we will need. Um, rather than sell stuff because of COVID, I'm simply just going to ask that you give as you are blessed. In the coming days, you will receive a letter in the mail with a little return envelope, just like our Welka ladies did for their spring no-bake-bake -bake sale. We're going to do the same thing. So you can uh, give that envelope back, or if you feel so moved today, you can drop a check in the offering or a gift. And um, in the memo line, you can write camp fundraiser. So um, I'm asking for your support because I believe in this ministry, I believe in our congregation, and I and my family are also personally invested. I believe in this, and my family believes in this so much that my wife, Macy, and I have sponsored the cost of the first tent. So I'm asking you to not only join our youth, but join me on this adventure so that we can set up camp for our youth. Thank you. Hymn number 385 in your hymnal, hymn number 385. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let's pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 5 through 12, the introduction. Peter and John had been arrested the previous day because they were proclaiming the news of the resurrection to the people. In today's reading, Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit so that he can proclaim salvation in Jesus' name to the religious authorities. The reading. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas and the high priest and Caiaphas, John and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name do you do this? And Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Lamb of God, sung by Rod Voorhees, for our special music. Your only Son, no sin to hide, but you have sent Him from your side. To walk upon this guilty sod And to become the Lamb of God O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God 
I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in your precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Your gift of love we crucified. We laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king we named a fraud and sacrificed the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. O wash me in your precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. I was so lost, I should have died, but you have brought me to your side to be led by your staff and rod and to be called the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. O wash me in your precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. second reading comes from 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 through 24, the introduction. Jesus' death on our behalf is the clearest demonstration of divine love. This is the very love we share with others, not just through our words, but especially through our deeds. In sharing such love, we fulfill God's commandments. The reading. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. Here ends the readings. Let us join together in the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel for today is from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of St. John. The introduction. In language that recalls the 23rd Psalm, Jesus describes himself as the shepherd who cares for his sheep. He is willing to die for them, and he is able to overcome death for them. 
Here is the text. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and gathers them, scatters them. A hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold, and I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up. I have received this command from the Father. Here ends the gospel. You may be seated. Hello again. For today's children's moment, I brought a soccer ball. And it's a little flat because we haven't got to play with it because of COVID. So when that comes around, we'll have to put some air back into it. Um, but I brought a soccer ball today um, because when I looked at the text, um, the New Testament lesson from 1 John really spoke to me. When Jesus says, um, love one another as I have loved you first. And so um, there's a lot of different ways that we can love each other. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, on this Good Shepherd Sunday, says that we should show love to each other as he first loved us. And so when you think about loving someone, you could spend time with them, you could pray for them, you could have a meal with them. There's a lot of different things that you can do to show love to other people. And when I saw this soccer ball, I thought about one of my favorite ways um, to show someone that I love them is to spend time with them. And I love board games and playing games in general. So this soccer ball made me think of spending, someone, uh, spending time with someone that you love and playing games with them. So that's my challenge to you this week is to find someone that you love and find some way to show that love just as Christ first loved us. Let's pray. Please repeat after me. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you. Thank you. For being our good shepherd. For being our good shepherd. Help us to love one another. Help us to love one another. Always and forever. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Our children's moment candy basket is restocked out in the narthex, so uh, for children and children at heart, please take one on your way out. Our service continues with the pulpit hymn. Have no fear, little flock, number 764 in your hymnal, 764 in your hymnal. Thank you. 
Before I start my sermon, I have two things. First of all, <clears throat> when I was a little kid, I had a pair of ears that stuck out, you know, like oftentimes little kids do. I don't know how they got pasted back, but now that I'm old, I wish I had those ears again because my ears aren't made for hearing aids, glasses, microphone, and a COVID mask. They get awfully full back here, and it's hard to keep everything on. So I kind of wish I had those ears sticking out a little bit more. <clears throat> and secondly, I want to pick up on, on Quentin's um, children's moment. We think we have to have big ways to show people that we love them. But I was talking to a lady the other day that experienced love from strangers, and I wanted to share that with you. <clears throat> She had gone shopping at Walmart, and she uses the little electric cart, you know, because she doesn't walk very good. And when she came to the checkout, she was checking out, and she was having trouble getting, handling it, and she also not, can't lift a lot. And so she's having trouble getting stuff into her cart, and this couple is standing there waiting for something that they bought, and they were getting it out of the warehouse. And, and the fellow comes over, and he says, here, let me help you. And he helps her load her cart. And she says, thank you. And so then she hangs onto her cart and drives her little cart, which is a miracle in itself. And she gets out to the door, almost out, and this young Hispanic man comes in with his wife or girlfriend. And he says, can I help you, ma'am? She said, well, my car's just right out here. He says, that's OK. I'll help you. So she takes her little cart and goes out. And he takes the cart and wheels it out to the car. And she opens the back end of the car, and he loads the groceries into the car, and takes the cart and puts it back with the other carts, and walks back in. Didn't know their name. Didn't know his name. And when she came home, she didn't talk to her husband about the groceries. He told her how she had been treated by strangers. She experienced the love of God from a stranger, two of them that day. You don't have to save the world to show God's love. OK. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text that I'm going to use today is one that is extremely familiar to you. And I almost, well, I didn't sleep well because I'm preaching on a text that you've heard probably a hundred sermons on over, and I've preached a lot of them on this same text. But I ran into some interesting things this past week that make it new, and it's Psalm 23. And since we didn't get it read, I would like you to recite it with me. And we're going to use the King James Version because that's the one that we old folks uh, know and, and learned. You young folks learned the newer version, so I apologize to the youngsters. So please say it with me, would you? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside still waters. He leads me, ask for the... <laughs> That's another problem of getting old. <laughs> Let's start it again, okay? I need my, my uh, prompt sheet. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Some fellow, I don't know if he's a scholar or a pastor, but anyway, he knows something about Hebrew. And he must not have had too much to do one day because he started counting the words in the 23rd Psalm. And he discovered that in Hebrew, there are exactly 26 words before you come to the little phrase, 
thou art with me. And there are 26 words exactly after the phrase, thou art with me. So the implication could be taken that that little phrase, thou art with me, is the heart of the psalm. That it's the bullseye of the psalm. And the first part and the second part draw us in to that bullseye to recognize that the Lord is the shepherd and he has promised that he will be with me always. Thou art with me. Then I want to talk to you about two words in Hebrew. In the first verse, it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I don't know about you, but I want a lot of things. I'd like to weigh less. I'd like to have a Porsche 911. I'd like to make more money. I know that isn't possible. <laughs> I want a lot of things, and probably you do too. But the word in Hebrew that is used in the 23rd Psalm to say want is used in another place in the Old Testament when the Hebrews come to the Promised Land after they've been in, in, in wandering in the desert for 40 years. And Moses is talking to them and kind of reciting what's happened to them. And he said, for 40 years, you have lacked nothing. That word that in the psalm says want can also be used for lack. I don't lack anything significant. I don't need a Porsche. I don't need a new computer. I'd like one, but I don't need to go to Hawaii or the Caribbean. I've got a job that allows me to serve people that I love. I don't lack anything significant. Oh yeah, my health isn't as good as I'd like it to be. I get more winded than I'd like to be. But I'm getting old. That comes with the territory. When you look at your life, what is it you want? When you're a youngster, you maybe want a good paying job. You maybe want to, want to be, this is a profession you'd like to be. When we get older, the wants change. Maybe the farmer wants a new combine, oops, or a new tractor this spring. Or he wants to be the first in the field. The wife wants a new dishwasher or a new washer and dryer. Kids want a new iPad. But do we lack the essentials? The bare necessities? I don't know if we can say that. That first verse could read, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. And that would probably be more true for most of us. And the second word I want you to think about is the word in the last verse. Goodness and righteousness, shall, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. The word follow in Hebrew is used in some other port places in the Old Testament to mean pursue. Now, following and pursuing are the same basic function. But pursue has a little more intensity for it. You know, if, if I'm walking downtown and I'm just walking along and I happen to be following Devon, he's walking down Main Street. Ah, okay. But if I'm pursuing Devon, that means I want to catch up to him because maybe I want to talk to him about something. I'm not just content with, eh, well, yeah, yeah, it's a nice day and Devon's enjoying it. Goodness and mercy pursue me all the days of my life. 
God is trying to give you and me goodness and mercy all the days of our lives. And sometimes we are so blind we don't see it coming. Like that lady at the grocery store. There was mercy because she got assistance. She came home and she was wowed by it. She saw it. Have you ever gone into a store and you see the clerk's name? Let's say it's Jacqueline. You say, hi, Jacqueline. How's your day going? Imagine if you're working at Walmart or any place and there's lines of customers going through and they don't say boo to you, they don't say hi, they don't say goodbye, they hardly even say thank you for anything, and here comes this customer and calls you by name and says, how's your day? I suppose she'd still be at the cash register. She'd probably stop and maybe even answer. And you would have showed mercy and kindness to somebody, and that's God's love. There's a third word I want to talk to you about. <clears throat> right before thou art with me, it says, He will lead me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The term path can mean rut, like when you go you know, out to the field and, the, and it's been raining, you leave some ruts behind you. Give me some tracks, like you're, you go walking through the field and, and you leave some footprints, you leave some tracks behind you. The ruts and the tracks give you <coughs> something to follow. When the people used to go on the Oregon Trail heading out west to settle the western United States, I don't think there were highway signs that said this is the Oregon Trail, or at least I don't think there were. There were tracks and there were ruts. And they could follow those. God gives us tracks to follow. All the saints that have gone before us have created these ruts and created these tracks for you and me to follow. To pursue that mercy and righteousness that we have received. Pursue it so we can share it with somebody else. Thou art with me. Four simple little words. But wherever I go, wherever you go, if you get in a situation that makes you uneasy, you could just whisper to yourself, Thou art with me. And know that you aren't in that situation alone. Now, one last observation about this 23rd Psalm. Before we get to that phrase, thou art with me, we talk about God in the third person, male. And I know there are some people who say God is female, so I kind of apologize, but that wasn't the way back when the psalm was written. But we use it in the third person. He did this. Once we have said, thou art with me, we change it to the second person person. Second person personal. Thou. Thou seems to have more power than the word you. You know, the modern translation says you in those places, but it doesn't carry the power of the word thou. It's like the first part of the psalm is talking about God. He did this. And the second part is a conversation with God. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. He was there at the table. It moves from that sort of impersonal, he threw that phrase, thou art with me, to a personal 
relationship with God Almighty. Well, I invite you to read the 23rd Psalm. Say it to yourself a few times, and hopefully these thoughts gave me a whole new appreciation on it. And hopefully they'll do that for you too, that you will know that good shepherd about whom you can say, Thou art with me. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding guard and keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please stand and let us together confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Page 105 in your hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I would like to take this time to introduce you to our new members. And uh, <coughs> being the part-time guy on the staff, I have to apologize. I only know one of the folks that are joining, so, or two of the folks that are joining. So that's one of the disadvantages of being part-time. Bruce and Catherine Abel, would you please stand? Take a look at them, folks. <laughs> Welcome. We're glad to have you here. Galen and Ruth Rood. Welcome. You maybe remember Ruth. She played in our bell choir. She also played the flute in accompanying our bell choir several times, and so we have added uh, a, a musician to us. And then Molly Wright. Molly here? Oh, way back there. I have bad hearing, Molly. What's the name of the little one? What did she say? Justin? Whatever you said. <laughs> Sorry about that, Molly. So glad to have you folks joining us. We hope that you will feel at home. And as you folks leave this morning, give them an elbow bump as you get close and tell them your name. Because, and you know, with these masks, it's terrible because they won't recognize you when they see you five minutes later. But still, if you get a chance, tell them your name and welcome them. Continue with our offertory. The radio broadcast today is in memory of Howard and Nina Haug. Gracious Father, we thank you for the gifts that you have given us, mostly, most of all, for the gift of your love, of your kindness, your blessing, and your pursuing us with your love and mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Let us pray for the whole church and all the folks. Gracious Heavenly Father, in the gospel this morning, Jesus said that the sheep will know his voice. So take the wax out of our ears, Lord, that we can hear his voice. The wax can be our busyness. It can be our self-centeredness. It can be our listening to TV or radio or music. It can be all kinds of things that prevent us from hearing his voice speaking to us telling us that he is the good shepherd. So help us to hear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and the world right now, Lord, because there's a lot of not listening. There's a lot of yelling. There's a lot of bickering. There's a lot of taking sides. Help us to learn that when we open our mouths to shout, we close our ears to hear, and unless we can hear somebody, we can never work out our problems. So teach us to listen not only for the good shepherd, but to listen to each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all of those in our congregation that are listed in our bulletin who are ill. We remember especially this morning Jim Wick as he is in the hospital and we ask for your blessing and healing for him. We pray too for all those friends of the congregation for whom we have listed in the bulletin. We add again Pauline McDaniel as she has fallen. We pray that you will help her bones to heal and keep her healthy and bless Dodie as she worries about her. We ask Lord that you comfort Margaret, the loss of her great granddaughter. We're not, we don't expect the young to die before us. And we ask your blessing on Bud Johnson and his family at the death of his wife, Jean. Whenever a death comes, we have to say goodbye, and that goodbye is difficult. But you have told us there's a place for us. Jesus said, I, you have prepared a place for us, and so we will see one another one day, and we can rejoice again. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our yeah. prayer. Father, we welcome our new members this morning. We ask you to bless their par- partnership with us in the gospel. We ask you to help them feel at home within our congregation and to be with us on Sundays and wherever to worship and to give praise to you for all your blessings. May we as a congregation be, blessed, be a blessing to them as they will be a blessing to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Well, Lord, we're going to leave this place in a couple of minutes. And so as we go from here, help us to be attentive to the places where we can, in very gentle ways, show love and mercy and kindness. And to do it with a joyful heart and a smile. And even if we don't get a thanks, that's not the reason we do it. We do it because you have loved us and therefore we should love one another. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we ask that you provide us with it, Lord, that you walk with us each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today as you leave, there will be Holy Communion cups out uh, at the back, and there will be a drive through communion when the service is over. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then after supper, he took the cup. And he gave it to each of them, saying, Drink this cup. For this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Then could we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. name. Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, done, on earth earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give Give us this day day our daily bread, bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as as we we forgive those who trespass trespass against against us. 
and, and lead us not, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. For, For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory, and the glory forever, forever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Receive God's benediction. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is alive. Let Christians sing verse 389. Radio broadcast today is a memory of Howard and Nina Howie. I'm Jennifer Hauk. Christ is alive, let Christians sing. The cross stands empty to the sky. Let streets and homes with praises ring. Love drowned in hell's shell. alive, no longer bound to distant years in Palestine, but saving him in and now, and peace and serve the Lord someplace else. Thanks be to God. Sunday broadcast from our Savior's Lutheran Church. We thank for you for joining us this Sunday. We hope that you'll join us again next Sunday. From all of us at our Savior's Lutheran Church, we wish you God's blessing. <laughs>